you might be wondering how I got here. Seeing my first hand at a Bellagio 510 2500 capped main game, but already sitting with $8,000 in front of me, and a headache. Well, come with me. My day started around 6 a.m. By 8 a.m., I was with my buddy Ernie 20 miles northeast of the Las Vegas Strip at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Here we are, Ernie. We're at NASCAR. I'm going to start this vlog here. Go ahead. This is the beginning of the vlog. That's the entire opening. <laughs> going to say something today I never thought I'd say. Today, we're going to start the vlog at the Las Vegas Speedway for the um, Pennzoil 400 NASCAR Cup Series race. That's where we are. Hey, hey. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. Hey, what's Where's your troublemaker at? Which one? Ernie? Yeah. I don't know. He was on the phone and then he wandered off somewhere. Here he comes. You see Tyler Reddick, I saw he got into the box, kind of pointed the wrong direction and too close to the wall, couldn't get out, had to back up. Costly mistake for Tyler Reddick. Nice meeting you, man. Ravens hoodie the whole time. Oh, stop it. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, but oh yeah, 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 yeah. No. So full day of NASCAR. We find ourselves at the Bellagio, and quite honestly, I don't know if I feel like being here. It's windy out. It's sandy out, and um, I have a headache. So we'll see. To say that I had second thoughts about playing a session today would be an understatement. I had woken up at the crack of dawn, driven to the strip picked up Ernie, drove out to the speedway, dealt with the crazy wind and deafening sounds of those cars all day, and I didn't wear ear protection, thus I could barely hear at this point, dropped Ernie off, and I was tired and starting to get a headache. Literally the only reason I stayed was because I had started the vlog at the speedway and didn't want to waste the footage. That's honestly the only reason this session even happens. I had called ahead, so I was quickly seated at a must-move game. At first glance, there was nothing special about the must-move game. And looking at the two main games going on, they didn't look like anything great either. I'm still considering just going home. I order a coffee, go use the bathroom, come back to the table, fold the big blind, and then play this. Actions folded to me in the small blind, and I open 8-3 offsuit because... The player in the big blind almost never defends. Thus, the two cards I'm actually holding matter little. Oh, wow. He defended. Oops. Deuce of clubs, nine of clubs, jack of spades. Well, I'm here now, and checking ain't going to get us out of this one. 
got a blast. I see bet for $40 and he folds. I would advise against doing this unless you have a headache and kind of want to go home anyway. An orbit passes and my head isn't feeling the best. I told myself I'm just going to play until they move me to the main game, hopefully capture four or five hands for the vlog, and then head out. And this one, the hijack, who has been very active, opens to $20 in the small blind calls. I look down at from the big blind, and this should be a pretty slam dunk squeeze spot. I don't squeeze though, I just call. Honestly, I'm just not in the mood. I know, I know it's a bad approach to the game, and I should know better, but I'm being honest. I'm just not in the mood today. Nine of hearts, deuce of spades, three of spades. The small blind checks, and I also follow with the check. The hijack C bets for $50 in the small blind calls. In the mood or not, I can't just pass up spots like this. I check raise to $200. The hijack thinks and then tosses $4,000 in the middle. Wait, what? The small blind exits. What in the world is this? How do you have $4,000? Oh my God, you have $20,000 in front of you, sir. What did I miss when I went to the bathroom? Well, I'm not folding, so... We run it once. Ace of spades immediately on the turn. That can't be good. The three of diamonds hits the river pairing the board. I table my hand and he turns king of spades, jack of diamonds face up. Excuse me? Well, that was an easy double up. The player to my left gets moved to the main game and a new player arrives for the very next hand. I'm now the small blind. You want the big blind? Yeah. Big blinds go around this. You this. can't win if you're not in game. Yeah, they go around this way. Oh, they yeah, just actually, okay. Yeah, actually goes. Gotcha. Like, I'm small and then the, the oh, next I'll be that, the, the, white the button, thing. the white thing, and then you'll be small. Gotcha. And then he'll be big. I'm on it. I'm learning. <laughs> I watch your uh, video more, man. I'll learn a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll change your life. The same villain from the previous hand happens to be the hijack again as the seven seed is leaving too. He limps in. The button limps in, and looking down at queen 10 offsuit, I complete. And the big blind comes along. There's four of us. Queen of spades, 10 of clubs, four of hearts. I check. The big blind checks and the hijack tanks for a bit, then fires out $140 in the button folds. So I've managed to flop top two pair versus a villain that has seriously overbet the pot and has a crazy large stack. I'm not folding. In fact, I'm going to check raise him again. I make it $400. The big blind folds. Action is now back on the hijack. The dealer tells him it's $400 total and he attempts to check. After being informed that that's not an option at this point, he says, all in, and throws out $5,000. I don't know what's going on here, but I call. I leave the option to run it once or twice to him. He selects twice this time. Six of diamonds and seven of hearts on the first board, Jack of hearts and four clubs on the second board. I expose my top two pair and he tables seven three of diamonds. Seven three diamonds? I wish I was making this up. I double up again. I'm not playing against you anymore. <laughs> Table 30. No. 
Can you move me here after that? Yeah, oh, you think it was the seat that did it? No, I just oh. like that seat. Bobbing top two against seven three probably did it. Yeah, probably did it. 41, 40. I have at least had to sweat King Jack, did you? Uh, I don't know what. The next thing I know is the floor is sliding me an empty rack and letting me know I'm being moved off of this gold mine of a table and into one of the main games. You've got to be kidding me. So that's how I ended up with a bit over $8,000 as I look down at my first hand at the main game. For vlogging purposes, this seat sucks, but it's all that's open at the moment, so I have to deal with it. I'll change seats later. Under the gun, I open to $20 with King Jack suited and get three bet to $60 by the hijack. While I'm deciding what I'm going to four bet him to, the cutoff cold calls the three bet. Nah, I just call as well. King 9-5 with two spades. Now that's a pretty good flop. I start with the check. The hijack continues for $110 and the cutoff folds. Check raising here isn't completely out of the question, but the hijack's three bet pre and betting into two players on the flop gives me some pause. I call the $110. The turn nine of diamonds sees me check again and the hijack doesn't slow down. $200. I call again because there's a chance my king is still good, but a spade rolling off on the river, that'd be nice. The river deuce of spades is just what the doctor ordered. Do people still say that? I check again and he wisely doesn't go for value and checks it back while turning over King Jack offsuit. And I quickly show him how that extra 3% suited card equity works as I drag the pot. Okay, this one is a really interesting one here. I look down at two queens from under the gun two and open a $25. 25? The low jack flats. The button raises to $110 and the small blind, peering at the action in front of him says, Two 25s? Then calls the $110. Chaos ensues. What much you say? Alright, I thought you said 225. No, I was just looking what it was. Okay, you go. Yeah, I thought you said 225. I need a floor. Oh, you said 225. I said 225. You said 225. No, 225s. No, that's right, right. 225s. 225s. <laughs> right? No, yeah. Pretty clearly. Yeah. It's, it's obviously no. what he meant. He yeah. put the hey. 110 out. Hey. I was looking at what happened. 25. Yeah, yeah, one, two, 25, and then he put 110 out. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at what happened. Yeah. Come on, lad. No, I'm just talking about these 225s. Right. Two right. <laughs> I don't think he meant to make it 225 and then put out 110. Yeah. Yeah, that make it. yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> tell us what your hand is, and we'll tell you if we, if it's worth if, if it's worth 225. <laughs> There's no way he meant to make it two hundred and twenty-five dollars. That's not a. That's not a thing. Yeah. I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially he has like nine, seven parts. He's not making it two. Twenty-five dollars. 
That's not. He said 225. He said 225. 225. 25, 25. That's the way he hosts. He said 225, then he put in 110. That's what yeah, happened. Put in I was looking at the bets. I said 225 oh, okay. bets. Could have just made a thirty. Okay. You got to you gotta stop making it. <laughs> yeah, I should have made a thirty. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Puts in one ten. At what point does this does this? I pay you, Jamin. I pay you ten dollars a month if you don't make it twenty five anymore. Man, that's good. Because he's good. He puts one ten. He puts one ten in the pot. Yeah. He folds his hand. Yeah. At this point, nothing no, no, we, we did call the fourth fold fold his hand. Fourth fold his hand, it's 110, it's your action. Thank you very much. Go ahead, yo. Yo. Well, On me, yeah, right? Two twenty fives. Right? You better <laughs> fucking raise it. <laughs> That's two twenty fives, right? I just wanna make sure <laughs> just wanna make sure. I call. <laughs> Six minutes later, the action resumes. The button was very insistent that there should be a raise to 225. With this information in tow, I just call the $110, as does the low jack. Oh, if he has aces, this is so sick, though. If he has aces, this is so sick. King, eight, deuce, with two hearts. I'm done. Check. The low jack checks, and the button now bets $225. Everyone folds. The button then shows us all a jack. Maybe he had king jack. Maybe he bluffed us all. Don't care. Next hand, please. Fucking guy, man. I was done with it. Like it had bad mojo all over it. Like I, I definitely wanted it to be 225 so I could pull. Yeah. Or high didn't seem very good. Then the drought happens. Nothing bad, bad, but just a series of hands that amounted to nothing but me losing chips. Not a lot of chips, but just enough to be annoying. Then I move seats. What you're going to see here is a very advanced move. I don't normally show these types of plays on the blog, as giving up every secret in such a public fashion is really bad for the bottom line. But the high level of complexity involved here will hopefully dissuade you from attempting it. This is what the solvers don't teach you. Under the gun opens to $30 and action folds around to the small blind, who you can clearly see is very involved in an activity that the kids call texting. As Axon approaches him, note the peeling of the cards with one hand, but keeping the perceived phone engagement high. This is critical. The phone face cannot drop below horizontal at any point. I found somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees is optimal. Once the button has folded, there's a three second pause. I personally pause for four seconds here, and sometimes I'll even wait for someone to tell me that the action is on me, but three seconds works fine. Executed three bet using multiple denominations from multiple chip stack sources. Do not pull from only one stack. Engaging multiple stacks conveys that you really mean business. After completing this action, 
immediately re-engage with your device to quote unquote, bake in the importance of this perceived conversation. Realizing that you're willing to raise the stakes of this encounter in the middle of an important phone conversation will leave villains with no other choice but to fold all but the tippy top of their range. The only issue I see with this execution is that the small blind disengages from the device as soon as the villain folds. In practice, you want to do a bit more selling even after the hand is completed. I give this a solid B+. I see what you did there, Sunshine. The whole fake text to raise move. Yeah. Very slick. Yeah, very slick. Yeah, very slick. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like I'm texting, it's important, but oh, this hand is so strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this hand is so strong that I have to three bet right now. Yeah. <laughs> As a kid, I didn't get everything I asked for immediately. Hell, most of the times I didn't get it at all. I look and feel quite miserable, but I'm up like six or seven K in a 510 game.